Hi everyone. In this video, I wanted to spend some time showing you how you can diagnose potential collinearity among your predictor variables when running a multiple regression analysis using SPSS. Now, collinearity basically refers to a situation where you have one or more predictor variables in your regression model that exhibit high linear dependencies on other predictors. And this can translate into several problems. One potential problem is that it can result in a lower observed multiple correlation than you would have expected based on the predictors that you've included in your model. A second potential problem is that it can decrease the precision of your estimated regression parameters. And then another is that it can lead to interpretive difficulties when it comes to identifying which predictors are contributing to the explained variation in the outcome variable or the dependent variable. Now, before we get started, I want to mention that um, the data set that you see on your screen right now, I'm going to make available to you at a link that is provided underneath the video description. So be sure to go there to download the data set if you want to follow along. Additionally, I'm going to include a link under the video description uh, to a PowerPoint, and that PowerPoint is going to go into a lot more detail concerning uh, various regression diagnostics, uh, what they mean, and also rules of thumb that I'm going to be uh, covering in this video. So be sure to download that PowerPoint for a deeper dive on this subject. So we'll go ahead and uh, take a quick look at the data set. We've got uh, basically simulated data, uh, student data, and um, we have variables uh, student achievement, depression, anxiety, mastery goals, and self-esteem. And in our regression model, we're going to have achievement be our dependent variable, depression, anxiety, mastery goals, and self-esteem. These are going to serve as our predictor variables. So to run our analysis and to generate our collinearity diagnostics, we're going to go to Analyze, Regression, and then go down to Linear. Next, we'll move the uh, Achieve variable to the Dependent Variable box, and then we will select Depress, Anxiety, Mastery Goals, and Self-Esteem, and move them over to the Independence box. Next, we'll click on Statistics, and then we will click on Collinearity Diagnostics, and also click on Descriptives here. So we'll click uh, continue and then on OK and get our regression results. And so when you are diagnosing um, potential collinearity, a good starting point is to look at the correlation matrix reflecting the correlations among your predictor variables. So when you look at this table right here, you'll notice that the first column right here has the dependent variable uh, and its correlations with the, uh, the predictors in your model. We're not so much interested in that uh, column. What we're actually interested in is this portion of our correlation matrix. So let me just kind of draw this out. I apologize if this is not uh, the prettiest thing. But as you can see right here, uh, you'll notice that what we're looking for is basically high correlations among your predictor variables or any kind of high correlations among your predictor variables. And you'll notice that the correlation between uh, your depressed variable right here and the self-esteem variable right here is negative 0.917. So that's a high correlation. And, you know, when you're trying to identify potential uh, linear dependencies among your predictor variables um, using uh, zero order correlations in this way, what you're looking for are correlations that are falling in, uh, you know, the 0.8s or 0.9s in terms of the correlations. Uh, different authors have sort of different ways of of thinking about it, a lot of them uh, are uh, would suggest looking for correlations in the 0.9s. And so, so you can see right here, we definitely have one uh, between depression and self-esteem, and that's a high negative correlation between those two variables. Now, the downside of just simply relying on this is that sometimes you can have more subtle forms of collinearity among your predictor variables. And it can be the case where you can have um, uh, no correlations in your matrix that would uh, fall in the 0.8s or 0.9s, but yet you would still have a linear dependency. And what I mean by that is, is that, you know, if I was to regress, let's say, uh, depression onto anxiety, mastery goals, and self-esteem, uh, then, you know, let's say the zero order correlations, there were no linear dependencies. It could still be the case that uh, the, the set of predictors, anxiety, mastery, and self-esteem, might collectively account for high variation in the depression variable or high explained variation in the depression variable. So in that case, you would have 
a potential um, uh, collinearity uh, going on. So let's take a, a look now at our coefficients table, and we're not going to really spend much time on the on the ANOVA results or the R square or any of that stuff. We're not really even going to spend time uh, interpreting the regression coefficients. What I wanted to orient you to is the collinearity statistics as you see right here. And the first one that you see is tolerance. And basically tolerance is computed as 1 minus the uh, R square value where you have a given predictor that is regressed onto the remaining predictors. So in other words, uh, I was just kind of talking about that a second ago in, in, a, in a way, when the R square value for the depressed variable um, is essentially um, computed by regressing depression onto anxiety, mastery goals, and self-esteem. So if I subtract that R square from one, that gets me the tolerance. Uh, for the anxiety variable right here, if I regress anxiety onto depression, mastery goals, and self-esteem, that would get me an R-square value. And if I subtract that from one, I get, again, the tolerance. And the same would go if we were regressing mastery goals onto depression, anxiety, and self-esteem. And then if we do self-esteem, regress onto depression, anxiety, and mastery goals. So the tolerance, uh, uh, the range of tolerance values is between zero and one. And so as you get closer to zero, that's indicating greater collinearity among your predictor variables. And the common rule of thumb uh, for diagnosing more severe uh, collinearity is uh, a tolerance value that is uh, 0.1 or below. You might see some folks suggest 0.2 or below. So you can see right here for the depression variable and for the self-esteem variable, both of those tolerances are pretty low. Um, they're kind of getting near uh, 0.1. And so these might be, again, our potential, um, uh, potential uh, problematic predictors in terms of having high linear dependencies on the other predictors within our model. Then you can see we have this VIF. This is called the variance inflation factor. And what this is really speaking to is the inflation in our um, in our, uh, the variance errors for our regression coefficients. These, uh, this column right here is the standard errors, so we would also expect inflation in our standard errors as a result of um, potential collinearity. And basically the VIF is computed as 1 divided by our tolerance. So basically 1 divided by the tolerance values uh, that we saw in this column right here. And so the lowest possible um, VIF that you will observe if there's no if there are no linear dependencies will be one. Um, however, you know obviously as we get larger, um, you know uh, uh, VIF values that are uh, increasing over one, then that's going to signal that you have increasing levels of collinearity among your predictor variables. And a conventional threshold that is oftentimes used is a VIF of ten, which would signal uh, high levels of linear dependencies. Uh, there are various rules of thumb in the literature. Uh, see my PowerPoint uh, where I kind of talk about the, uh, these possible rules of thumb. Uh, so I have seen uh, folks suggest VIF values as low as, say, five or six or seven as being an indication of more severe levels of, um, of uh, linear dependencies or collinearity. So kind of using sort of a, a, a broad, um, you know, six, seven range right there, you would see that the depression and self-esteem variables um, might be um, uh, exhibiting problems in terms of being collinear with the other predictors within our model. So now let's go down and we have this other table uh, with collinearity diagnostics. And basically with this table, we have further uh, information that will help us to uh, identify potential uh, linear dependencies and identify variables that may be contributing to those dependencies. So Again, within the PowerPoint, I actually uh, spent a lot of time unpacking uh, this particular table. So I'm just going to give you some general rules of thumb uh, that I refer to in the PowerPoint. One is that you're going to look in the condition index uh, column right here for values that are 30 or above. And so you'll notice that we've got dimension 3, dimension 4, and dimension 5. All three of those dimensions have collinearity indexes that are above Uh, 30. And so that's kind of the first step is really trying to identify those collinearity indexes with values that are above 30. And so 
uh, because we do have that, uh, then that would signal more uh, substantial problems with potential dependencies among our predictor variables. Then the next step is to use our variance proportions part of the table. And you'll notice that uh, we've got four columns uh, uh, that are given right here. We've got uh, constant, that's our intercept, depression, anxiety, uh, mastery, and self-esteem. Actually, that's five columns, sorry about that. Um, and we're mainly concerned with the four predictors, uh, the four columns that contain uh, variance proportions associated with our predictor variables. And what we're essentially doing is, for those, uh, for those rows that have condition indexes that are greater than 30, what we're looking for are variance proportions for two, two or more variables uh, that, is, that are uh, 0.50 or greater. And so uh, in that particular case, then that would signal uh, potential dependencies among the predictors that are identified in those rows. So you'll notice that looking at our rows, if we go down to this row right here, where we have a condition index of 30.879, we only have uh, one variance proportion that is above 0.50. So we're not gonna be worried about any uh, dependencies among predictors in that row. Then you can see the next row, uh, a condition index of 72.601. You can see that, uh, again, we only have one value that is above 0.50. Um, and so we're not going to be worried about any dependencies there. But you, when we look at the last one, uh, you can see that we have um, a depression variance proportion of 0.79 and self-esteem variance proportion of 0.90. So both of these, uh, these uh, variance proportions exceed uh, 0.50. And so, again, this would signal that we, that we have uh, high dependence between our depression and self-esteem variables. Okay, so um, that uh, actually pretty well concludes this video demonstration. And again, I encourage you to download a copy of the PowerPoint uh, on this topic. Uh, again, it will provide you with a much deeper dive and a lot more information that I've that really uh, not gone over in this video. So I appreciate you watching.